It's nothing. It's nothing. Like our Aslaf, Salafi Salihin, they, this dunya was so valueless in their eyes that they would feel that the droppings of a goat are better than this dunya. Oh, time will come. Oh, I've got a lot of time. Oh, I'll make toba. When I grow up, I'll keep a beard. When I grow up, I'll take tasbih. When I have white hair, then I'll take tasbih in my hand and do a little bit of istighfar here and there. This is waswasa of shaitan. Shaitan puts this in our mind. No, my dear brothers. Follow the Sunnah, Sharia of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, don't wait. If there is no eyesight in the heart, then you won't have any sight in the hereafter. When a person, a mu'min, has this khashir, he's scared of Allah, he cries and the tears come out, then his heart opens up. And his heart is blessed with that nur and light of Iman. And there is so much nur filled in there, that after that khashir, he can differentiate, he can see the haqq and batil. Respected elders, brothers, friends, first of all, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us tawfiq to perform Salatul Zuhr with Jamaat. May Allah give us tawfiq to pray all namaz with Jamaat. In Salah with Jamaat, there is special nur, there is special barakat, there is special blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should make an attempt, make a resolution that inshallah I will pray all my Salats with Jamaat. One of the mashayikh once missed his salat with jamaat. He was punctual, always with jamaat. But once he missed his salat with jamaat. And he was very regretful. Our mashayikh, they were mashayikh. They realized the reality of this world and the reality of the hereafter. And because of that, they used to focus on the hereafter. They used to neglect this dunya. Their Attention was towards the hereafter. And they knew what reward and thawab and barakat and blessing there is in salat with jamaat. So they used to be punctual of salat with jamaat. Hazrat Maulana Rashid Ahmad Gangohi rahmatullahi alayhi was once in the annual conference of Darul Uloom Deoband. And after the jalsa and bayanat and khatam and lectures and everything, people come to meet and greet and Hazrat greets everyone, replies and suddenly it's Asr time so Asr Azan is called out Hazrat goes to make wudu but there are so, so much crowd that people are shaking hands and everything so he struggles he somehow gets to the wudu place performs wudu by the time he comes Salah has started and his takbir ula is missed the first takbir is missed. After Hazrat, you know, does his salam, salah finishes, there is some special uh, feeling of sorrow and regret and remorse on his face. So someone asked him, Hazrat, anything wrong? You know, what, can I help you if you need anything? Why are you looking so down? They said nothing. But that person insisted. So Hazrat said, Aaj baiis saal ke baad takbir ula fought hui hai. Today, after 22 years, I have missed my takbir ula. Allahu Akbar. So punctual about takbir ula, not just salat with jamaat. Takbir ula, the first takbir. As soon as the Imam says Allahu Akbar, we also say Allahu Akbar. This is first takbir, joining with the Imam from the beginning. This Shaykh, also punctual of Salatul Jamaat, but once his Salatul Jamaat is missed due to some reason. So he says, we have read in the Hadith that Salatul Jamaat's reward and thawab is multiplied 27 times. So let me repeat this Salat 27 times in order to make up for that reward. It's nothing from Sharia or nothing recommended or required. If you make qaza or miss, miss namaz, you pray it once, you're, it's done. So here he wasn't even qaza, he only missed the jamaat, he prayed it on time. But he said, I've missed my jamaat, so in order to get that 27 times reward, let me repeat this salah 27 times as nafil. So the 26 repeats are nafils. 
So he prayed that salah 26 times more. So 27 in total. At night, he sees a dream and someone calls out in the dream, okay, you have prayed the uh, uh, salah repeatedly 20 times, but where will you get the thawab of Ameen from? When the Imam says, Waladdallin, and we say Ameen, and whoever's Ameen coincides with the Ameen of the Malaika, then all his past sins are forgiven. This special thawab of Ameen, where will you get that from? Now saying Ameen, there are two versions. Some say loudly, some say silently, whispering with a soft voice. But we all have to say it, whether Hanfi or Shafi or Maliki or Hanbali, whatever your mazhab. But you have to say Ameen. Some say, say it with a, with a little bit of voice, others say quietly, but we all say it. So, saying Ameen, normal practice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was silently. Sometimes he would say it loudly. So Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi's opinion is that the more preferred version and sunnah is to say it silently and without raising the voice. Other ayyama say, no, a little bit of voice. Not screaming as some people just scream their heads off. That's not, not sunnah according to any imams. But a little bit of voice, that's okay. You know, that you can hear yourself, maybe the person next to you can hear you. This is the call of Imam Shafi Ramatullah and others. Anyhow, Alhamdulillah, Allah gave us the tawfiq to perform salat with jamaat. Also, Allah gave us tawfiq to sit in the masjid and learn something about our beautiful deen. May Allah give me the tawfiq to say something which is beneficial for all of us. And give us all the tawfiq to practice upon what we say. Yesterday we were in Masjid al Quba, Stamford Hill. Mawlana Yunus Sab delivered a lecture in which he mentioned a good point. He said we should take our deen from reliable sources, from ulama, qualified scholars whom we can trust. He said we should listen to their bayanat, we should ask masail from them. If you are going for Hajj, you need to learn Masail, go with a qualified scholar in his company and perform your Hajj properly. Today, with regards to our dunyavi worldly affairs, we look for the best person. If we are sick, we need to see a doctor, we will see which doctor is the best. We want to see the best doctor, the best surgeon, the best cardiologist, the best GP or best consultant. With regards to our other affairs, business, or with regards to car, mechanics, whatever field, you look for the best person. So why when it comes to the matter of deen, we just go to any Tom, Dick and Harry and listen to them, and say, oh, so and so said this, so and so said that. We go to take our knowledge from TV channels, and on there we don't know who is there, what he's saying, what his beliefs are, and where he's coming from, and we start following whatever we hear from there. No, we should go to people whom we trust, whom we have seen, who are among our community, who are before our eyes, who are performing salah five times a day, who are your imams, who are your leaders, who are teaching your children, who have taught you and they are looking after your children. You should trust them, rely upon them, listen to them and listen to their uh, talks. So, taking knowledge from reliable and proper sources is very very important. MashaAllah you have your Aima, Mawlana Sahib, plenty over here. There is no lack of uh, you know, ulama. We have plenty. So you should uh, listen to them and ask your Masail from them. Allah give us tawfiq to listen. Alhamdulillah. May Allah give us tawfiq to practice on what we say as well. The subject of today is opening your heart to the light. Light of Quran and Sunnah. First of all, we have to remember we all have a heart. Don't forget, everybody has a heart. Allah said, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَذِكْرَى لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ أَوْ أَلْقَ السَّمَعَ وَهُوَ شَهِيدٌ وَلَقَدْ ذَرَأْنَا لِجَهَنَّمَ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا So this قلب and heart, this is something inner part in our body. And that is the uh, place where our thoughts appear and it functions. This aql and logic we have, is it inside the brain or is it in the heart? There are two opinions. Imam Shafi Ramatullah says it's in the brain. 
امام ابو حنیفہ رحمت اللہ علیہ says it's in the heart علامہ شبیر رحمت عثمانی رحمت اللہ علیہ says that the brain uh, the aql and logic is in the brain but it has a special connection with the heart and the function is from the heart and the sign for that is if someone is injured or stuck with something on the head then his mind goes away and he doesn't understand things and sometimes he becomes disabled and he is dependent upon other people so there is something there and the connection is with the heart and the heart take, takes control of it this is with regards to where it is and a little bit of debate over there however we all have a heart and also this heart is given the attributes good and bad as well if someone is bad we'll say he's a very hard-hearted person if someone is good we say he's a very soft-hearted person if someone is under some anxiety he says my heart is burning so the heart is there the heart has effects and it's been it's being attributed with many things so we need to focus on the heart and check is my heart soft gentle like that sponge which absorbs everything and listens to good advice, follows it? Or is it hard like a rock upon which the rainwater falls, but the rock gets no share of that rainwater, it just slips and goes away? The second type of heart is mentioned in the Quran. Allah said, with regards to the Jewish community in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ثُمَّ قَسَدْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكُ فَهِيَ كَالْحِجَارَةِ أَوْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوَةِ وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْحِجَارَةِ لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَارِ وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَشَّقَّقُ فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْمَاءِ وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَهْبِطُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah mentions the story of the cow, Surah Al-Baqarah. You have heard of the story. Allah says, we showed you this great miracle of Musa alayhi salam. That the cow was slaughtered and a part of it was touched with the body of that murdered person. And that murdered person after three days came to life and he revealed the identity of the murderer and then died again. So this huge miracle you saw of Moses, Musa alayhi salam. But in spite of that, your hearts were hardened. Even after witnessing this mu'jiza, you never humbled yourself before Musa alayhi salam, my prophet, or before me, I am your creator. ثُمَّ قَسَدْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكْ And they were like the stones, the rocks. In fact, أَوْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوَى أَوْ here is meaning بَلْ بَلْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوَى In fact, even more severe in qasawat and hard-heartedness. Why? Because وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْحِجَارَةِ لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنَهُ الْأَنْهَارِ through some rocks, uh, they, they split open and water comes out from them. Sorry, so through some rocks, water comes out and rivers flow from it. Where does the river Nile f- flow from? If you look at the beginning where it starts from, it's from mountains. And from mountains the water comes and gathers and that's where the river flows from. So from between rocks, water comes out and rivers flow. And وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَشَّقَّقُ فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْمَاءِ Sometimes rocks split open and water comes out from there. You have seen that miracle of Musa alayhi salam. When he hit his staff on that rock and twelve springs uh, gushed forth from that rock. So sometimes water comes out of the rocks when they split open. And وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَحْبِطُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ Sometimes rocks fall due to the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He might feel that some thunder came and rocks started falling from mountains. So they did not just fall on their own, they have ihsas, they have realization. They also fear Allah. Even the rocks fear Allah, but you have no fear of Allah. Remember, Allah is not unaware of whatever you are doing. So this heart gets this qasawat in it, and it becomes hard. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ الْقُلُوبَ تَصْضَعُ كَمَا يَصْضَعُ الْحَدِيدِ إِذَا أَصَابَهُ الْمَاءِ وَإِنَّ جِلَاءَهَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ Surely the hearts get rusted, just as metal gets rusted when water continuously falls over it. So when fitnas fall over our hearts, our hearts get rusted like that metal which is rusted. And in order to polish our hearts, 
you have to have zikrullah. Zikrullah polishes the heart. In another hadith, وَإِنَّ جِلَاءَهَا كَثْرَةُ ذِكْرِ الْمَوْتِ وَتِلَاوَةُ الْقُرْآنِ To polish the heart and bring that light inside and the nur inside the heart, you need to do two things. كَثْرَةُ ذِكْرِ الْمَوْتِ Remember your death uh, abundantly, often. And وَتِلَاوَةُ الْقُرْآنِ Recite the Qur'an as much as you can. These two things. So combining all three, three things become. ذِكْرُ الْمَوْتِ Tilawatul Quran and Zikrullah. So you do these three things and your hearts will become soft and they will become gentle and they will become they will create that goodness in the heart. So we have a heart and we have to bring some light in it. We have to open it. We don't uh, we, we, we shouldn't put it under the curtains or you know behind a wall or screen because it was the habit of the mushrikeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hamim al Sajda, Hamim, Tanzilum min al Rahman al Rahim, Kitabun Fusilat Ayatu, Quran and Arabian Likomin Yalamun, Bashiran wa Nazira, Faradak Tarum Fahum La Yesmaun, Wakalu Kulubuna fi Akinatim Mimma Taduna Ilay, Wafi Azanina Wakrun, Wamim Bainina Wabainika Hijabun. فَعْمَلْ إِنَّنَا عَامِلُونَ Allah said, Hameem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Hameem. Tanzeelun min al Rahmanir Rahim. This Quran is a revelation from Rahman and Rahim. Kitabun fussilat ayatuhu. This is such a book that the verses have been made clear and they have been detailed clearly. Quran and Arabiya. The Quran is in Arabic language. لِقَوْمٍ يَعْلَمُونَ For those who understand, who have some knowledge, who want to learn. Bashiran wa nazira. This Quran gives good news and gives warning. فَأَعْرَضَ أَكْثَرُهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ Most people turn away and go and they don't want to listen. And what do they say? قُلُوبُنَا فِي أَكِنَّةٍ مِمَّا تَدْعُونَا إِلَيْهِ Our hearts are in a covering from that which you say, which you invite, towards which you invite. We don't want to listen to you. It doesn't come into our heart. It does not penetrate into our hearts. We are, our hearts are covered. وَقَالُوا قُلُوبُنَا غُلْف they say there is ghilaf upon our hearts. So there is a covering on our hearts and whatever you say will never affect us. You can say whatever you like, you can call as much as you like, it will never affect us. Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam called his people for 950 years. Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam complained, he said, Rabbi inni da'awdu qawmi laylan wa nahara falam yazidhum du'ai illa firara wa inni kullama da'awduhum litaghfira lahum ja'alu wa sabi'ahum fi adhanihim wa astaghshaw thiyabahum wa asarru wa astakbaru istikbara thumma inni da'awduhum jihara thumma inni a'lantu lahum wa asrartu lahum israra faqultu astaghfiru rabbakum innahu kana ghaffara Nuh alayhi salam pleading goes on. So over there as well, they said that our hearts are in covering, there is some curtain over our eyes, we can't see what you are saying. Our, and there is some cork inside our ears, something that is stopping us from listening to you, we can't hear what you are saying. Just as if a deaf person, he switches off his machine, he, you, he can't hear what you are saying. Because it is not there, his machine is not there. You scream your head off, he won't be able to hear. So they say, Muhammad, you can scream as much as you like, we can't hear you. We can't see what you are saying. We can't understand what you are saying. There is a covering on our hearts. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this type of covering. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open up our hearts so that we can see the truth and we can follow the truth. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa taught us in the dua. He said, make this dua. Allahumma. أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا التباع وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابا Oh Allah, show us the haq as haq and let us follow it and show us falsehood as falsehood and let us abstain from it So Allah, may Allah show us the truth and give us the tawfiq to follow the truth and may Allah show us batil and give us the tawfiq to stay away from batil May Allah keep our uh, divert and control our hearts with the haq, wherever the haq goes, we flow with the haq. This is what Allah, Allah's Prophet وسلم, used to ask. Ya muqallib al qulub, sabbit qalbi ala deenik. Wa ya musarrif al qulub, sarrif qalbi ila fa'ati. O turner of the hearts, uh, uh, strengthen my heart upon your deen. And O, o, o turner of hearts, turn my heart towards your deen and your religion. 
So we should make this dua as well, that may Allah keep our hearts steadfast upon the deen, and protect it from wavering here and there, and moving around, and keep it straight on sirat mustaqim This is the condition of the heart. We need to open our hearts up and oh, bring that hidayat inside us and make dua that Allah keep us on haq as long as we live. Now, the hearts have both sides. Noor and zulmat. The heart has the good side, the bad side. What we need to do is strengthen the good side and bring noor and light inside the good side and get rid of the bad side and control our nafs, control our ego. When we bring our nafs and ego under control, the heart will open up itself. The heart has two doors, two gateways. One is nafs and the other is sadr. Nafs is the road, is the gateway and the door to the evil. Through that nafs, shaitan comes, shaitan attacks. Rasulullah said, upon the heart of every Muslim, there is an angel and a qari. Qareen is that shaitan. So the Qareen, he whispers in his heart evil. And the angel, he tries to stop him from that evil. Now it's up to the individual to understand which one is from shaitan and which one is from the angel. And it's up to him to protect himself from the shaitan and listen to the angel and whatever he says. So this is called waswasa and ilham. Waswasa is from shaitan and ilham is from the angel. So, the nafs is the gateway of shaitan and he co- controls our heart, tries to control our heart through that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, the shaitan sits on the heart, on the qalb, on the, through the nafs with his, with his trunk, like the trunk of an elephant. And he keeps on pricking the heart. And when a person remembers Allah, zikrullah, the shaitan goes away, he runs away. But when he is ghafil and uh, heedless, his mind is here and there, he's watching a movie, film, doing, going around, looking, doing wrong things, shaitan is there and he's whispering, yes, yes, do this, do that, do this, do that, do that. And he's, you know, whispering bad things, evils in him. And as soon as he remembers Allah, shaitan runs away and he goes, flees. That is why when Azan is called out, he flees 36 miles away from Madinah Munawwara. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, shaitan wa lahu dhurat. So he runs and he flees when he hears the name of Allah, when he hears Azan, when he hears Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, he doesn't want to listen to Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, because Dhikr of Allah. So he, he, he closes his ears. So when Dhikrullah is done, Shaitan runs away, he flees. And the angel tries to help that person. And you know, so the, the gateway of Shaitan is Nafs, and the gateway of the angel is Sadr. This is Alam Nashrah Laka Sadra. Faman Yuridi Lahu in Yahdiahu, Yashrah Sadrahu, Lil Islam. Shah Abdul Aziz Muhaddis Dehlevi Rahmatullah writes in the tafsir of Alam Nashrah that when a person controls his nafs, then his sadr, the gate of his sadr expands and it broadens up, widens up. And you know, things come smoothly inside the heart. His heart is opened up and he understands everything. The, all the pieces of the jigsaw fit in. And he understands his Islam. Yashrah sadrahu lil Islam. Allah opens his chest up for Islam. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Alam nashrah laka sadrak. Afaman sharah Allah sadrahu lil Islam. This is his sadr. The gateway is broadened. And everything fits in. And the nur and the light of iman and a'mal saliha comes in. It's easy for him to believe in Allah. It's easy for him to understand Shariat. It's easy for him to get up for Fajr Salah and come to the Masjid and perform Fajr Salah. It's easy for him to fast. It's easy for him to give zakat, to go for Hajj, to do Zikr of Allah, to recite the Quran. He doesn't have to force himself to do these things. It's easy for him to avoid sinning, for, uh, to avoid fornication, gambling, adultery, and lying, backbiting, cheating, fraud, and taking money from interest, and haram sources, making false claims. He doesn't feel hard to stay away from these things. These things become easy for him because his chest has been broad, broad and open and he understands everything. He feels easy to practice upon the Shariat. This is, his, his Sadr has expanded and when the Sadr expanded, expands, then the nafs shrinks. The nafs gets small and then the Shaitan cannot come inside because the gate is shrinked. 
And when it's shrinked, it's small, shaitan wants to get inside, but he can't find a way in there. So we should try and make our sadr open and make it broad. And the nafs will shrink and it will become small and it will become, you know, really feeble and weak and it will not instigate shararat and into your heart and it will not whisper. You will, be, you will stay away from it. That is why the mashayikh say, a person should not eat too much. Because if he eats too much and his belly is expanded, then his nafs whispers inside him. And if he is hungry, like the Prophet ﷺ used to stay hungry for many many days, Sahaba used to eat hungry, stay hungry deliberately. So when he is hungry and his intestines shrink, then the nafs also shrinks. So the nafs cannot whisper sharara into him. Because he is hungry, so he is thinking about, he is humbling himself, and he is remembering Allah, he has got humility inside him. But when you have eaten too much, and you are getting those burps, then your nafs is also big and strong, and is going to whisper inside you. So, this is the condition of the nafs and the sadr, the heart. You need to open your heart up. And how will your heart open up? When you get that nur and light inside you. Allah said, فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ إِنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ Whomsoever Allah wants to guide, Allah opens his chest up for Islam. Allah said, فَمَنْ شَرَحْ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ فَهُوَ عَلَى نُورٍ مِنْ رَبِّهِ When the chest opens up for Islam, then nur comes inside the heart. Then that person is on a nur and light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the ayat, sahabas asked him, Ya Rasulullah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna nura idha dakhala sadra in fasaha lahu. When the nur enters the heart, the heart opens up. So Sahaba asked, Ya Rasulullah, فَهَلْ لِذَلِكَ مِنْ عَلَمٍ يُعْرَفُ بِهِ Is there a sign for that by which we can understand the heart has opened up and nur has entered inside the heart? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yes, there is a sign for it. What is the sign? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, At-tajafi an dari al-ghurur, wal-inabatu ila dari al-khulud, wal-isti'adadu lil-mawti qabla nuzulihi. Three signs. At-tajafi an dari al-ghurur, running away from this house of deception. Turning yourself away, going, distancing yourself. I don't want anything to do with this dunya. Dunya, 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 paisa, 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 what is this life? I've been created for this dunya. The, the, the animals also eat and drink and sleep and fulfill their sexual desire. If I just go after dunya, then what is the difference between me and that animal? Animal is better, he won't have to give any hisab and kitab. I have to give hisab kitab. So a person thinks for himself, I have not been created for the dunya. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have been created for the worship of Allah. So you get this realization that this dunya is not, it's nothing. It's nothing like our aslaf, salaf al salihin This dunya was so valueless in their eyes that they would feel that the droppings of a goat are better than this dunya. Because with that dropping at least you can use it as a fuel. So this dunya is valueless. It has no value. You turn yourself away from this dunya and focus on the akhirah. That is the second thing. Wal inabatu ila dar al khulud. You turn towards the house of eternity. This is a house of deception, where a person is deceived, he is thinking, I'm going to stay here forever, I'm going to live for 100, 200, 300 years. Nobody lives that much. 50, 60, 70, and you're gone, finish. Maybe most 80, 85, 90, oh, by both Julia. 100, century mark this up. Queen ki taraf se letter aega, card ke aap, mashallah, century mark di aapne. So, Nobody is going to stay here forever. We understand that this house is a house. This dunya is a darul ghurur. Umal hayatu dunya illa mataul ghurur. And then you turn towards darul khulud. Darul khulud maqaman daru akhiratin. Inna al iqamata fi dunya ila ajali. Wa kullu man halla fi dunya fa murtahilun. Yawman li man zilihi fi ithri murtahili. The house of eternity is the house of akhirat. And staying in this dunya is for a small, short period, temporary life. And whoever comes this dunya, in this dunya has to go one day. Nobody is here to stay forever. And whoever comes has to go one day. Again, after one, after the other, after the other. We hear about janaza. So and so has passed away. So and so has passed away. 
So we should remember our own death when we hear that this is a sign. When this happens, this comes inside your heart. And you get this realization that uh, this dunya is a world of deception and I have to prepare for the hereafter. And number three, getting ready for death before it arrives. Getting ready for death before it comes. Are we ready? If Malakul Maud comes and says, Chalo Mawlana Abdul Rahim Sahib, Chalna hai, I would be scared by a minute, Ya Dora ka salatu tawba padlo, tawba shun kuhi. Tawba kar lo, istighfar padlo, kuhi kisi wasiyat, wasiyat kisi ka kuch ho, to bhai ye kar lena, ho kar lena. Am ko to tiyari karne ki zarubar padhe ka, Malakul Maud ko ke bichara mehrbani karo thoda. Lekin our aslaf, Allahu Akbar, they were always ready for death. Anytime, Malakul Maud comes, Chalo, Subhanallah. You hear about the, as the Sheikh mentions, in Maud ki yaad, remembrance of death. That young man who is going out on a journey and Malakul Maud comes in the form of a human being and walks with him and talks to him nicely, gently and then says, I am Malakul Maud, your time is nearly up, you have to go. So if you want to say anything, go back home and say something, talk to them, any wasiyat, wasiyat, you still have time. So he said, oh, is that so you have come to take me? He said, yes. So if you don't have any important work, do it. And the young man says, there is nothing more important than meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't have any important work at home, take me now. He said, Malakul Maud said, well, you still have some time. And I have been instructed to follow your desire and take your ruh out in the manner which you like. He said, is that the case? He said, yes. Okay then, let me perform salah and pray a few rakat namaz and extract my soul while I am in sajda. And that's what he does. And he performs salah. And when he is sajda, Malakul Maud takes his ruh out. I was watching this video on YouTube, on YouTube about death, remembering our death. And uh, I think it was something I, very nice, some nasheed as well with it. And in that, it's saying that you have to go one day and there is a, a picture on there of someone who has died in sajda in Medina Sharif, in Riyazul Jannah in Masjid Nabawi. And the police are surrounding it and people are there. They know that this person is not getting up from sajda and he is still in sajda. And they know that person has died in sajda. And the clip is there. So we have to be ready for our death. Whenever it comes, wherever it comes, we are prepared. This is what is the Adadulil Mauti, Qabla Nuzulihi. We shouldn't go into tasweef, thinking, oh, time will come, oh, I've got a lot of time, oh, I'll make toba. When I grow up, I'll keep a beard. When I grow up, I'll take tasbih. When I have white hair, then I'll take tasbih in my hand and do a little bit of istighfar here, here and there. This is waswasa of shaitan. Shaitan puts this in our mind. No, my dear brothers, follow the sunnah, shariat of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa Now, don't wait that I'm going to live for so many years. This is, when this comes into your heart, this is a sign that the nur of iman has entered your heart. So, we need to get this nur inside our heart and expand our heart. Open it up. It will be opened up with that nur. And how do you get that nur? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allahu nur samawati wal ard. Allah is the nur of the heavens and the earth. Nur, two types. One we can see, this tube light, the sun, the moon, the stars, this is visible nur, light. And nur, which we can't see, it's in the heart. The nur of the heart, the nur of iman, the nur of basirat. With that nur, we can differentiate between right and wrong, true and false, haq and batil. When you have that nur, basirat, this is called nur basirat. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ this is what Allah said, هَذَا بَصَائِرُ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةٌ لِقَوْمِ يُؤْمِنُونَ That there are two things, Basarat and Basirat. Basarat is the nur of the eyes which, which you can see. And Basirat is the nur of the heart which, which you can see and differentiate between Haq and Batil, right and wrong. May Allah give us this Basirat. May Allah give us this nur of Basirat. Allah is the possessor and the owner of both these noors. It is from him that these noor comes. If Allah gives you this noor in your eyes, you get it. If Allah takes it away, you go blind. 
Similarly, if Allah gives you the nur of iman, basirat, you will have it. If Allah takes it away, then your heart becomes blind. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَمَنْ كَانَ فِي يَادِهِ أَعْمَى فَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ أَعْمَى وَأَضَلُّ سَبِيلًا Whosoever is blind in this dunya will be blind in the hereafter as well. This blindness of the heart. If there is no eyesight in the heart, then you won't have any sight in the hereafter as well. So this is nur of iman, nur of basirat. Allah is the possessor of both nurs. Allahu nur meaning Allahu munawwiru samawati wal ard. One of the tafasir. Allah gives nur to the heavens and the earth. He brings the sun and the moon and the stars and whatever light, electricity, whatever light, or through fire, through wood and whatever, through the oil, through the zaytun tail. Allah then mentions zaytun. Because in those days, light was lit through oils. And the oils were of many types. Like you get paraffin, kerosene, and you get vegetable oil, uh, sunflower oil, and all. And the best oil was olive oil. And olive oil's light was very pleasant. It was appealing, it was pleasant, and it looked nice. So olive oil was the best oil to light a furnace. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the nur that Allah places in the heart of a mu'min, مَثَلُ نُورِهِ يعني مَثَلُ نُورِهِ فِي قَلْبِ الْمُؤْمِنِ كَمِشْكَاتٍ فِيهَا مِصْبَعَ Like a niche in which there are furnaces, candles, in which there is light. So in the heart of the mu'min, the heart of a mu'min is like a niche. And in there is the nur and the candles and the furnaces which are, which are lit inside and lighting his heart. Allah said, وَكَمِشْكَاتٍ فِيهَا مِصْبَحْ الْمِصْبَحُ فِي زُجَاجَةٍ أَزْزُجَاجَةُ كَأَنَّهَا كَوْكَبٌ دُرِّيٌّ يُوْقَدُ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ مُبَارَكَةٍ زَيْتُونَةٍ لَا شَرْقِيَّةٍ وَلَا غَرْبِيَّةٍ يَكَادُ زَيْتُهَا يُضِيءُ وَلَوْ لَمْ تَمْسَسْهُ نَارٍ نُورٌ عَلَى نُورٍ Allah said, the zaytun tail, olive oil, is so bright and it's extra virgin oil. It looks like even if you don't put a matches to it, it it's going to light itself. So this nur of iman in the heart of a mu'min is like that precious olive oil. It looks like it's going to bring that nur itself. But when the mu'min has that iman nur, and then he does a'mal saliha, then that nur increases, and increases, and increases, and it enlightens his whole heart. And the whole heart is lit with that nur. Like this room, plenty of tube lights, and the whole room is lightened. So similarly, there is so much light in the heart that Allah said, Noorun ala noor. Noor upon noor. Meaning, there was noor of iman and the noor of a'mal came over it. So the noor of iman increased due to the noor of a'mal. So the a'mal bring noor and light inside the heart. Allah said, Yahdi Allahu li noorihi man yasha. Allah guides towards this noor whomsoever he wills. Huadribu Allahu al lin nas. And Allah expands uh, parables and He explains uh, similitudes for people so that they can understand. Wallahu bi kulli shay'in alim. And then Allah said, Where can you get this nur from? If you want this nur in your heart, where do you get it? Allah said, Fi buyutin adin Allahu an turfa in the masjids. Allah said, Keep your masjid good, nice, clean. Adin Allahu an turfa. Keep good masjid and come to that masjid. Wa yuzkara fi hasmuhu. And invoke Allah's name in that masjid. You have to come to the masjid to take this nur of iman and nur of a'mal. يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ فِيهَا بِالْغُدُوِّ وَالْآصَالِ رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْعٌ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَيِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِيْتَاءِ الزَّكَةِ يَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا تَتَقَلَّبُ فِيهِ الْقُلُوبُ وَالْأَبْصَارِ إِلَى آخِرِهِ After mentioning that, that the nur will be achieved through, and through تسبيح يسبح له فيها بالغضوب والآصال رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله جين عن وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار Allah mentions five things number one ذكر الله number two تسبيح and number three إقام الصلاة number four إيتاء الزكاة and number five خوف of Allah fear of Allah the more fear of Allah you have the more your heart will open up and the more nur you will get. Khashiyat brings nur of iman in the heart. When a person, a mu'min, has this khashiyat, he's scared of Allah, he cries and the tears come out, then his heart opens up. And his heart is blessed with that nur and light of iman. And there is so much nur filled in there that after that khashiyat, he can differentiate, he can see the haqq and batil, the true and false. 
So to get this nur in your heart, you have these five things which you need to do. Zikrullah, tasbih of Allah, glorification of Allah, and establishing salah. Not just faraiz, five times a day. More upon faraiz, nawafil as well. Tahajjud, ishraq, chash, awabin, nawafil, salatu tasbih. These are the a'mal, iqamu salah, and wa ita'u zakah. Give your zakah properly, spend in the path of Allah, alms giving, charity. This is what brings nur of iman in the heart. And يَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا تَتَقَلَّبُ فِيهِ الْقُلُوبُ وَالْخَوْفُ of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you have these five things, لِيَدْزِيَهُمُ اللَّهُ وَحَسَنَ مَا عَمِلُوا وَيَزِيدَهُمْ مِّنْ فَضْلِهِ وَاللَّهُ يَرْزُقُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ And then Allah mentions the condition of the rejecters, the deniers, the disbelievers. Allah said, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَعْمَالُهُمْ كَسَرَابٍ بِقِيَعْتٍ يَحْسَبُهُ الظَّمْآنُ مَاءً حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَهُ لَمْ يَجِدُهُ شَيْئًا وَبَجَدَ اللَّهَ عِنْدَهُ فَوَفَّاهُ حِسَابَهُ وَاللَّهُ سَرِيعُ الْحِسَابُ أَوْ كَظُلُمَاتٍ فِي بَحْرٍ لُجِّيٍّ يَغْشَاهُ مَوْجٌ مِنْ فَوْقِهِ مَوْجٌ مِنْ فَوْقِهِ سَحَابٌ ظُلُمَاتٌ بَعْضُهَا فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ إِذَا أَخْرَجَ يَدَهُ لَمْ يَكَدْ يَرَاهَا وَمَنْ لَمْ يَجْعَلِ اللَّهُ لَهُ نُورًا فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ نُورٍ Allah said, there are two types of deniers, disbelievers. One are the light and the other are the heavy deniers. The light ones are mentioned first. أَعْمَالُهُمْ كَسَرَابٍ بِقِيَّةٍ يَحْسَبُوا ضَمْآنُ مَا They disbelieve, deny. However, at the same time, they do some good deeds as well. Like charity, like making soup kitchens, and like going around doing charity work, helping poor people. These are good a'mal. However, because... Amal can only be accepted if there is Iman. If there is no Iman, then there is no Jaan, no spirit, no soul in that Amal. Let's say for example, you have a horse over here, beautiful one. You ride on it, upon it, it gallops and it takes you wherever you want. Because there is soul, spirit in that horse. And there is another horse in the town center made from stone just for kids to play on in the park or over here and kids go ride on it thinking that it's a real horse and they jump on there horse made from wood there is no life in there the horse will not take you anywhere both horses one has soul the other hasn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the a'mal of a mu'min has that ruh of iman in there so the amal chalta hai takes him forward and brings that nur in him and however, the a'mal of a person who disbelieves and rejects, there is no e, nur, no, no ruh and no spirit, no soul in there. So, it's like kasarabin biqiyatin, yahsabuhu dhamanu ma'a. It's like the mirage in a desert. A, per, a traveler sees that there is light, sorry, there is water over there. And there are waves of river flowing. And he's thirsty, he's dying of thirst. And he rushes, he rushes. But when he gets there, hatta idha jahu, lam yajidu shayya. When he gets there, he doesn't find anything. Oh, oh, it was just a deception. There's no water over here. We still see this when we travel from Makkah, Mukarramah, Madinah, Munawwara. On the motorway, there are some places where we see like, this. oh, yeah, your motorway is going, there is water over there. But when you get there, the car just keeps you know, uh, traveling at a speed. So this is mirage. And the, so these disbelievers think that, oh, I'm doing very good deeds. I believe in heaven and hell. I'm going to go there. I'm going to get a good reward from God Almighty. So, when they get there, there is nothing there. But as such as the, the mirage, they thought water, but there was nothing. So they get to the hereafter and akhirat, there is nothing there. Whatever good deed they had done, Allah had repaid them in this dunya. In this dunya, Allah repaid them through good health, good wealth, good children, good company, good this, good that. Allah rewarded them. Jackpot, million pound, national lottery, whatever. Allah repaid you for everything you did over here. When you get there, there is no good deed left for you to be rewarded. If there is kufr and denial of Allah. This is the first kind. And number two, the second kind are those who don't only deny and reject, but at the same time who oppress, who do injustice, and who, 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 who commit tyranny and go around, uh, you know, deceive, deception, fraud, this, that. Allah said these types of uh, are, kafirs are أَوْ كَظُلُمَاتٍ فِي بَحْرٍ لُجِّيٍّ يَغْشَاهُ مَوْجٌ مِنْ فَوْقِهِ مَوْجٌ مِنْ فَوْقِهِ سَحَابٍ a person who is in a darkness, in a, a deep ocean, and uh, there are waves upon waves on that ship. It's night time. 
The night itself is dark. There is no moonlight. There are no stars. And there is no light in the ship as well, except for the candles or whatever, and the furnaces. And suddenly a storm comes, and the waves upon waves. And they, they are staring at death in front of them, scared, terrified. And uh, Allah said, يَخْشَاهُ مَوْجٌ مِّن فَوْقِهِ مَوْجٌ مِّن فَوْقِهِ سحاب. Waves upon waves, and on top of that are the clouds. So the clouds have appeared, whatever dim light of the stars was, the clouds have uh, you know, covered it. So there is no light whatsoever. So much darkness that إِذَا أَخْرَجَ يَدَهُ لَمْ يَكَدْ يَرَاهَا The closest part to a person's body is his hand. So if I wanted to see something rather than looking at Yahya by here, I would look at my hand here, I can see my hand. But there is so much darkness that not seeing Yahya by or not seeing Rizwan, I can't even see my own hand. That this is my hand. There is so much darkness. Allah said, إِذَا أَخْرَجَ يَدَهُ لَمْ يَكَدْ يَرَاهَا And Allah said, this is the condition of the heart of these types of people. There is darkness in there. There is no nur of iman, no nur of a'mal. And then Allah finished the ruku off with saying, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَجْعَلِ اللَّهُ لَهُ نُورًا فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ نُورٍ Whosoever is not gifted with nur by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he cannot get nur from anywhere else. The nur will come only from Allah Nur Samawati Allah. The owner of that Nur, the Munawwir of the heavens and the earth, He will give you that Nur. No one else can give you that Nur. You have to turn to Him and come to Him to get that Nur. This Nur, Allah is to bless from Adam alayhi salam through the Prophets to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam. Quran is filled with that Nur. Every word, every ayat of Quran is filled with that Nur. There is this lady who embraced Islam. Here in London, her name was Dr. Anne Coxon, and she changed it to Dr. Amina Coxon. How did she embrace Islam? Long story, cutting it short. She says, I was a devout Catholic. I had studied Catholicism, and I, I, you know, but however, there were some you know, questions which were unanswered. And she said, I studied, and I studied other religions as well. I, I studied Torah as well, Old Testament, New Testament, this book, that book. And then I came upon the Quran. And the difference between them, I can say like a huge building in which there are rooms. You open door of one room and you see a little bit of light, some interesting things there. You open another room, a little bit of light, some interesting things there, another room. And suddenly you open this huge hall in which there is so much light that it, it, it dazzles your eyes. And you have to cover your face. And then you slowly open your from between your fingers you start looking. And you see, and then you, you, you take and absorb that nur and the light in that room. And she said, this is the example of the previous books and the Qur'an. In those other books you see a little bit of nur. Because there are some still ayat which Allah revealed in their original form. Although it's been concocted and tampered with, but there is some haq in there. So that is a little bit of nur in there. But Quran, it's not been tampered with. It's the original form, direct word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, preserved throughout the 1400 years. Not a single word or letter has been changed from it. So the nur of Quran is in its original form. And when you open that and you read it, and that nur comes into your heart, it's so much that you can't take it in. And you have to control yourself to take it in. She was trying to say that you can't realize and understand the power of Quran unless you have been deprived of it beforehand. If you did not have Quran and then you got the Quran, then only you can realize the power of Quran. Otherwise, you can, if you've had it from since birth, You've been to Madrasa, Maktab, you've been reading Amma Hafti, and you don't understand the power of Quran. But when you did not have it, then you get it, that's when you realize it. So, for you as well, my dear brothers, read the Quran. Uh, not only read it, read the meanings as well. Recite it, every word has nur and you get sawab for it. Uh, recite it as well, because that is one haqq of the Quran, and read the meanings of it as well. So, if you read it, then you will understand. Quran will open up before you. Finishing off, just one hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a beautiful hadith, the first hadith of Kitab al-Tahara of Sahih Muslim. Abu Malik al-Shari radiyallahu anhu says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, At-tuhuru shatru al-Iman. Cleanliness is a huge part of Iman and faith. 
والحمد لله يتملى الميزان أن الحمد لله فيلز the scale the ميزان وسبحان الله والحمد لله يتملى آني أو قال تملى ما بين السماء والأرض أن سبحان الله والحمد لله fills that gap which is between the heaven and the earth والصلاة نور أن الصلاة is full of نور نور هي نور الصلاة is نور هي نور والصدقة برهان and sadaqa is an evidence it's an evidence it's a proof that you spent your money in the right place sadaqa will speak for you on the day of qiyamah and say yes this person gave sadaqa and he gave spent in the path of allah when you will be asked regarding your wealth so sadaqa will come forward and give evidence on your behalf was sadaqa to burhan was sabr dhiya and sabr is a shine it, it brings the shine and the gloss on your heart patience patience brings that shine and gloss on your heart whether it's patience through fasting or patience upon musibat and problems or patience upon practicing on your deen whatever type of patience if you are patient then this sabr will bring a, a shine and a, put a gloss and chamak on your heart it make your heart gleam and wa sabru dhiya wal quran hujjatun laka aw alayka Quran is an, either an evidence, an argument for you or against you. Kullu nasi yaghdu. Everybody goes out in the morning. Fabayyun nafsahu. And they, they, kya kehte hain? Bech dete hain, hawale kar dete hain. They give, they hand themselves over to someone. Meaning they go for a job. Business, trading, job, whatever. To earn livelihood. Everybody goes in the morning to do something, to some place. فَبَعِيرُونَ نَفْسَهُ They hand themselves over to someone. Like the, buyer, the seller hands over the goods to the seller, to, to the buyer. So they also hand themselves over. Then, فَمُعْتِقُهَا أَوْ مُبِقُهَا They either free themselves from Jahannam or they destroy themselves into Jahannam. Allah protects us. Allah give us good livelihood. Take us to good places in the morning. Bring us to the masjid first to perform our fajr salah and then go on our job. Give us tawfiq to read Yasin Sharif before we go to work. To read some Quran, to do some zikr before we set off for our work. So in the hadith, you start off with At-Tuhuru Shatrul Iman, you understand that. Well, well Alhamdulillah Tamla Ul Mizan, Alhamdulillah fills the scale. The scale in which our A'mal will be weighed on the day of Qiyamah. Alhamdulillah. All praise is due for Allah. When you say this from the depth of your heart, then there is so much noor in there that that noor can enlighten that scale, that whole scale upon in which the a'mal will be weighed. That scale will be huge. It will be from east to west. And our a'mal will be put in there. Even if they are equivalent to Mount Uhud, they will be put in there and they will be weighed. So, uh, as salat uh, Alhamdulillah has so much light in there. And Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, if you combine them both, they have so much noor in there that that noor can fill up the gap between the heavens and the earth. Like the sun rises, and you know, gets rid of the darkness and lightens whatever is in the fiza and w- 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 in the environment. Similarly, Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wala ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar. These kalimat have nur. If you join them both, Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, you do this tasbih in the morning, this tasbih will bring nur and light into your hearts. If you recite Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al Azim hundred times in the morning, then all your sins will be forgiven even if they are equivalent to the froth of the ocean. So recite this tasbih in the morning. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al Azim Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al Azim Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al Azim It will bring barakah in your rizq as well. The, the, the birds are give, provided with their rizq through their glorification and praising of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they, their chirping is praise and tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because of that tasbih and that hamd, Allah provides rizq for them. So, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, enlightens the heart. And it has so much light that it can enlighten the gap between the heaven and the earth. And then was salatu nur. Salat is nur hi nur. Salat is nur, it brings nur on the face of Musalli. You will see, everybody can see that. You don't have to be a big buzrug or wali of Allah to see that. You look at the face of that Haji Sahib who is always behind the Imam Sahib in the first Sahib. Who is Sufi, who is humble, who controls his tongue, who keeps himself to himself. 
who does not but but ding ding into other people's business, who keeps himself. You see this special nur on his face, his shine. His face is nurani. There is nur in there. You can see. Everybody can see. And if the mashayikh, they can witness it more because their hearts are clean. They like mirrors, and they can see the aks. Once there was this boy in Darul who used to misbehave. He was a very sharif boy, and Hazrat, you know, in those days they've been talking about long time ago, twenty, twenty-five years ago. You know, he did some sharaarat. I don't know. He was caught for some sharaarat, and Hazrat, you know, give him a little bit, and he said, "Na laik beesharam." देख तेरे चेहरे पे कोई नूर ही नहीं है आदमी एक यासीन पड़ता है तो उसके चेहरे पे नूर आ जाता है तेरे चेहरे पे एक यासीन का भी नूर नहीं है एंड व्हेन वी रियलाइज ओ बाबा यू नो हजरत के सामने तो सब संभल के रहने का एहतियात करने का ये अल्लाह वाले हैं इनको दिखता है इनको नजर आता है क्या है क्या है बिकॉज देर हाज देम सेल्व आर क्लीन दे आर तहजुद गुजार दे प्रे तहजुद ऑल द टाइम एंड देन इन टू जिक्र एंड फिक्र सो अल्लाह क्लीन देर हाथ एंड दे कैन सी दैट नूर एंड दुलमत दे कैन डिफ्रेंशिएट बिटवीन दैट लाइट एंड द डार्कनेस सो रसूल सलात नूर एंड यू नो सलात तहजुद इज ब्रिंग्स अ स्पेशल नूर ऑन द फेस ऑफ द पर्सन हू परफॉर्म्स तहजुद लेट मी मैंशन मोन लतीफा ओवर हियर यू नो वेन वी से regarding the hadith sometimes some words are turned into hadith by mistake that's called mudraj included in the hadith by mistake so the muhaddisin pick that mistake it so happened that one muhaddis was teaching hadith and the students are sitting in front of him and he had read the sanad hadathana fulanun qala hadathana fulanun qala hadathana fulanun an abi hurairah radhiyallahu anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he had reached there and a young man who was mashallah very pious entered the room and he came and sat in the gathering the muhaddis looked at his face and he had so much noor on his face because he was tahajjud guzar punctual of his tahajjud salah so he had special noor on his face so he looked at his face and he had reached an abi huraira qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he looked at his face And he said, "Man kasurat salat hu bil layl, hasuna wajhu bil nahar." Whosoever prays lots of salah by night, then his face looks good throughout the day. So the students who were writing, they thought that this is hadith, so they wrote it down as hadith. So this is how, this is an example of when a hadith is mistakenly said to be hadith when it's not hadith. So the others who saw it, they knew that oh, this is a mistake. So they get carry out. They, they point that mistake. This is mistake. The point I'm tw- trying to make here is that Muhaddith himself was a big buzurg, and he made this remark. But and the remark is true: that if a person prays lots of salah by night, he prays his tahajjud, then he will have nur, and his face will shine and look good throughout the day. So this is the nur of tahajjud, the nur of Quran, nur of Yasin, and this is nur of salah. Rasulullah is saying, whatever salah you pray, farz salah, nafil salah, salat al-tasbi, then there is nur in there. Was salat al-nur? Perform your salah properly. Bring that nur into you. And many other meanings are given over here as well. And we will finish on this hadith. Also, when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to get up for tahajjud salah, he used to make this dua, which I mentioned in the beginning. Allahumma jal fi qalbi nura, wala place nur in my heart, wa fi sami nura, nur in my ears. Noor in my eyes, noor on my tongue, and noor in my body, noor in my skin, noor in my hair, and noor in the pores. क्या कहते हैं वो inside वो हड्डी के अंदर जो गुदा होता है उसके अंदर भी नूर दे दे और रसूलुल्लाह सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम सेड ओ अल्लाह गिव मी नूर इन फ्रंट ऑफ मी बिहाइंड मी ऑन माय राइट ऑन माय लेफ्ट अबव मी बिनीथ मी ओ अल्लाह Uh, you know, give me great amount of nur. Wa azimli nura and wajalni nura. Make me nur, nur, nur. Make me nur, make me nur. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was that type of person. Kadam kadam pe barkatein, nafas nafas pe rahmatein. Jahan jahan se wo shafiye aasiyan guzar gaya. Jahan jahan guzar hua, wahi wahi sahar hui. Jahan guzar nahi hua, wahi hai raat aaj tak. Every step he took, 
قدم قدم پہ برکت ہے دیوز برکت بلیسنگ فرم اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی نفس نفس پہ رحمت ہے ویور ہیز بلیسد بریث وینٹ دیر از رحمت اوور دے فرم اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی جہاں جہاں سے وہ شفیع عاصیہ گزر گیا فرم ویور دیٹ انٹرسیڈر آف دا سینرز پاسٹ بائی دیر واز برکت بلیسنگ اینڈ رحمت مرسی آن دیٹ پلیس جہاں جہاں گزر ہوا وہیں وہیں سحر ہوئی ویور ایور ہی وینٹ then there is the light of dawn over there aur jahan guzar nahi hua wahi hai raat aaj tak wherever he did not go there is night fall on the darkness of night still there over there where he didn't go allah subhanahu wa taala has brought us over here and through us he has brought the noor of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the noor of quran the noor of hadith to these lands maybe allah wants something good for these people and it is our duty to take this noor and spread it out wherever we can take it so this is the noor noor of iman noor of a'mal noor of quran noor of hadith we can take it forward and give it and pass it on to those people around us this is what the poet is saying over here so yahi hai ye dusri jagah kya kehta hai shair ha naam unka jahan bhi liya jayega naam unka jahan bhi liya jayega zikr unka jahan bhi kiya jayega ذکر ان کا جہاں بھی کیا جائے گا نور ہی نور سینوں میں بھر جائے گا ساری محفل میں جلوے لپک جائیں گے ویر ایور دا پروفی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم از مینشن اینڈ ویر ایور ہز نیم از ٹیکن اینڈ ویر ایور ہز احادیث اینڈ ہز تھنگز آر اسپریڈ دین دیٹ ہول دا آل دا گیدرنگ ول بی فلڈ ود نور دیئر ہارٹس ول بی فلڈ ود نور اینڈ آل دا محفل اینڈ دا مجلس میں جلوے لپک جائیں گے تجلی آف اللہ ول کم ان دیٹ ان دیٹ گیدرنگ اینڈ ان دیٹ پلیس سو دس از دی ادر حدیث وچ آئی مینشن مینی حادیث وچ مینشن دا نور اینڈ ان دس مینر می اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ اوپن اپ آور ہارٹس فار دس نور فار دس لائٹ اینڈ گیو از میکسیمم شیو آف دس نور اینڈ دس لائٹ گیو از توفیق to pray our salah properly give us tawfiq to read the quran properly give us tawfiq to do zikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly give us tawfiq to spend in the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to realize that this world is a house of deception and akhirat is the house of eternity eternal life and we have to prepare for the akhirat give us the tawfiq to be ready for death whenever it comes and allah accept our gathering our sitting over here and give us maximum benefit from whatever we see